how does your work touch the life of an audience member, of a young teenager? So we provide services that are significant because they connect you to the emergency room, they connect you to your favorite shows, they connect you to the internet and your friends on MySpace or Facebook or whatever. What exactly do you do as a CEO? A big part of what I do is to strategically make sure that the company has the right goals, is going in the right direction, and that everybody in the company understands what those goals are. What's the most important thing? It's to make sure that every team member in my company feels valued, um, feels that their contribution matters, and that they love coming to work. What grade school classes were your favorites? I wasn't that great of a student because <laughs> I just wanted to have a good time um, and talk a lot. I loved history. I was good at social studies. I was a pretty good at English. Loved phys ed and uh, liked drama. Do you think it was your natural ability as a leader that helped you advance to become the CEO? I think it was a lot of things. I think it was relationship building, keeping in touch with the people I knew and worked with, being in the right place at the right time, and I think it was also working really hard over the years. How did you choose to work in the telecom industry? So it wasn't really a plan, it just sort of happened. I think lots of life is just the opportunities as they come to you. Do you seize the opportunity and go for it and take some risk? You've chosen a very diverse staff and why do you value diversity? So I like the diversity of age because we can learn from one another. I like the diversity of race and lifestyle, whether you're gay, straight, black, Asian, Muslim, Christian. The more diverse thinking we have, the better the ideas that are going to come. What is the hardest thing you've had to overcome in your life? I would say for me, in a really young age, I lost a friend in a car accident, and then I lost a friend to cystic fibrosis. Then I lost my grandparents. I had a lot of deaths pretty early in my life. So I would say death was really hard for me. But compared to living in poverty and overcoming um, some really serious domestic issues, I didn't have that. Um, I was blessed to not have that. And to children who do experience that, I would say you can rise above it. You are strong enough, have the courage to get through it, and make the best of things. Because my mother was a recovered alcoholic. So when I was 0 to 12, she was drinking during those years, and it was tough. And she went in and got help and went to AA. And I went to the meetings as a 12-year-old till I was 18. And what I learned from that is that bad things happen. Addictions occur. Abuse occurs. But all we have control over is our response. How do we choose to respond to that? So as a very young girl, I decided I was going to choose to respond in love and with courage and with positiveness. And I was going to make the best of it. What advice would you give our viewers? Believe in yourself. Be kind to yourself. Don't listen to what other people say, especially the media. You know, I think today, especially young girls more than boys, care so much about how they look and how much they weigh and all this external focus. What matters is what's inside you. And I would say to young people today, spend as much time on your inside as you do on your outside. Love who you are and what you're gifted at, and don't listen to the judgments of the world. You know, if you want to be a painter, you want to be a nurse, you want to be a writer, you want to go sweep streets. As long as you're passionate about it, go do that.